Welcome to the Lower Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. One of the more beautiful spectacles we see here in the canyon. This beautiful blue-green water and its confluence with the main stem of the Colorado River is just about a quarter mile down here. Here we're able to see more or less the full sequence of rocks here in the Grand Canyon. Thanks for joining me today. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey on a trip with some friends through the Grand Canyon on a rafting trip. Um, just wanted to show you some of the real beautiful features we see here in the Grand Canyon. Uh, definitely the most eye-popping spectacle here in the lower Colorado River is this beautiful blue-green water, which is spring-fed water that comes from some of the limestone units here in the Grand Canyon. So as groundwater moves through these limestones, these calcium carbonate-rich rocks, it dissolves out some of the calcium carbonate. And then a few, a mile or two up here, there's a, some springs that discharge that groundwater, um, which is full of this calcium carbonate. And then it moves on downstream. And that's what imparts the color we see here in the lower Colorado River. It's also what forms these travertine dams. We can see as the water moves over, it actually precipitates some of that mineral material and makes a dam. So you can see these terraces um, down the riverbed from these uh, travertine deposits by this mineralized water. It's just absolutely spectacular. And something you don't really expect when you're down in this uh, canyon with all this sediment-laden water on the main stem of the Colorado River. Uh, the last thing you're kind of thinking of or expecting is this Caribbean blue color down here in this desert region. But nonetheless, this is the little Colorado River. It's also a sacred area for the Navajo and the Hopi uh, people. Uh, there's a place near here where they think their people first emerged from the earth. Um, and so this is a really special place for them. Um, and so we'll leave that area aside and just do some of the recreating with some of the other river runners here at the bottom. Uh, what we'll do here in a few minutes is you can actually get in the water in your life jacket and float down through some fun little uh, small rapids and ripples. Um, but let's go check out some of the geology here. I think one of the more striking things here, um, looking at some of the, the boulders, is you can actually see some of the travertine deposits right here um, in this dry part of the creek bed. You can actually see some of the precipitated calcium carbonate. There's an old travertine dam here that's no longer connected to the main stem, but it probably fills up when the water's higher uh, in this little section. Um, let's see what else. We can also see places where the, the travertine has acted as a cement uh, for all the big boulders transported by the river. And here we have a, basically a conglomerate um, with a lot of these boulders cemented together in it. Um, you also see some of the fluting. So when they get flash floods down here, these rock surfaces get scoured uh, by sandblasted by the water passing over them and get shaped and polished. Uh, even this big block of, of probably limestone here has this exceptionally polished surface and some of these flutes on it as well where it's moved across. Um, this is a good place to look at the entire stratigraphy of the Grand Canyon. We've got the Kaibab limestone and the Torweep formation at the top. The big uh, buff colored unit near the top is the Coconino sandstone. And then there's a real striking red unit below there that's the Hermit Shale and the Supai group. And then this very big cliff forming unit here is the Redwall Limestone. It's Mississippian in age. Then we get to these uh, more gray and green units below. And this is a sequence of the Muab Limestone, uh, the Bright Angel Shale, and then the Tapete Sandstone. And the Tapete Sandstone is actually the unit that crops out here at river level. So maybe let's hop across these travertine encased or encrusted boulders and take a look at uh, some of the Tapete Sandstone. The Tapete Sandstone is the lowermost unit of all the Paleozoic rocks in the Grand Canyon. So it's um, the bottom of the stack, not the entire stack of rocks, but of the Paleozoic flat-lying sedimentary rocks 
it's at the bottom of that entire stack. And the Tapit sandstone is a Cambrian unit uh, formed along a shoreline. So these are basically beach and shoreline river deposits along the ancient edge of Western North America. So if we take a good close look at it up close, um, it's a very gritty sandstone. It's, it's pebbly in places, um, has a bit of a sugary texture. It's extremely coarse rich. Um, one of my favorite units, really. It, do, it tends to form a lot of ledges. So you can see all the, the layers in here. And then one of the more conspicuous things that it has are cross beds. So right here we can see the main bedding horizon, these ledges, but within those, if I can maybe get the camera back here in the shadows a bit, uh, you can see some angled lines. Here's some in the sun that might be a little easier to see. Um, some angled lines look like almost like shingles or dominoes in here. So these are the cross beds that help us interpret the environment being uh, river systems feeding into the ocean, shoreline deposits, uh, that sort of thing. Now, as you go further up into the Tapete, it eventually grades into shales, the Bright Angel Shale, which we can see forming this slope unit just across from us here. Uh, and then the cliff unit, not the big cliff of Redwall, but just below it, there's another cliff here of Muav limestone. So collectively, this, this sequence of sandstone to shale to limestone, all in the Cambrian, indicates something about what was going on with sea level at the time these rocks are deposited. So if the sandstones represent beach deposits and the shales, the Bright Angel Shale represents shallow marine deposits, then the limestones above represent um, deeper water, uh, deeper marine conditions. What we have here collectively is what's called a transgressive sequence. These three rocks collectively in this order indicate that sea level was rising from sea level being right near the beach to sea, sea level being uh, offshore with you know under 100 or 200 feet of water to sea level being under several hundred feet of water in a deeper marine setting. So classic uh, Cambrian sequence that we see in other parts of the Western US and in fact throughout the world that indicates that this was truly a global sea level rise that um, caused this event to take place. Um, let's hop back down here. And see what else we can find here. So we'll probably just head back down uh, the trail and I'll do, I'll try to do a little video with the camera uh, floating the rapids. Some of you might find that kind of fun to head down through the rapids uh, with me and just experience that thrill as best we can. So we'll head back down the canyon, but hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the lower Colorado River. It's beautiful blue, green, turquoise waters. A little bit about the Tapete sandstone, this Cambrian aged sandstone. Oh, there's some really nice cross beds over here. Um, hopefully, let me get a little bit closer. Uh, you can see some of these really nice cross beds right here in this layer of sandstone. So. Yeah, we'll head back down this little trail. It's a hot day, so the water will feel good to get in it and show you a little bit about uh, the recreation down here in the Little Colorado River. Okay, it's all about the approach. How many people do they have? A lot. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 